Some things are new, but some things aren't. The fact that it's still awesome after 10 years, and we're talking, oh, bacon, bacon many ways. We're gonna show you how to brine and smoke it up next. Oh, bacon in the morning, yum. Exactly, I'm thinking bacon needs to be its own food group. And you know, especially because Nico, you're saying there are so many things that we can do with bacon, right? Absolutely, yes. How can you not love it? And you're gonna show people uh, how they can do a simple brine. And I always personally thought that a brine involved some liquid, not in this case, but it starts with a great piece of meat. That is the pork belly. So you just have the nice pork belly, free range pork belly. And then you got uh, this, it's been just brined this morning for maybe an hour. And that has incorporated brown sugar, brown sugar, kosher salt, and the spices grounded. So the best way to grind the spices is do it daily, not doing a big batch for the whole year, and do it in a coffee grinder. So we've got um, coriander, coriander juniper, juniper berry, cinnamon, star anise, and chili flakes. Yum, yum, yum. Now this stage here. Week old. A week old. So that's sort of stored how for people that are doing that? Um, Ziploc bag is a good way to do it. And uh, or otherwise vacuum sealed. And I just don't want to leave it in the fridge. Don't, uh, don't look at it, don't touch it. It's, be patient, be patient, because once we get to this, it's time for smoking, and this is something that you do um, on the weekends here at Shambar. Let's show people what that looks like right now. So what kind of stages do you have there? So here it's been about three hours. Um, so from that stage there, we rinse it out a little bit first, then you put it on here. And then we got, here we're gonna put the barbecue brochettes. And that's one of your breakfast items you have that's here as well, right? That's one of the right? brushes items with a lot of different smoked meats. So what kind of meats do you have there? Uh, we have the bacon, we have the andouille, the saison perry, and the uh, mortadella. Beautiful. And they all have different flavors. Let's pull off one of the pieces of meat there here. And um, of course, you have several different breakfast items here that are popular at Shambar at its brand new location. By the way, only a couple of doors down from where it was before. This bacon here used the same brine, but you didn't have to cure it, right? Uh, For as long. No, no, you know, it's the same thing. It's a smoked yeah. bacon and it's been uh, finished with maple syrup and the spice from the brine. We, li we like to call it candied bacon, it tastes like candy. Uh, we also have the caramel, a bacon caramel, we serve our waffles, the bacon bits, the crispy bacon, great on oysters, salad. Those are the classic plumps uh, wrapped in bacon. That's a tarty flat from the, uh, from the Haute Savoie. It's got cheese in it. So many great items here at Shambar. Side Shambar's. bacon. Oh, side bacon. Cut me a piece of that because i got to try it. For more details on Shambar, they're great breakfast, Jody and Riaz. People can check out their website. But we are going to be uh, cooking up a storm this morning here on BT. It's perfect, you know, here at Shambar. New location, only two doors down from the last one. Nico, we're showing people how to make your mezza plate. And uh, halloumi cheese, I don't even know what that is. Halloumi cheese is from Cyprus, and it's got three different uh, milk in it. Cow, sheep, and uh, goat. And what we're gonna do here is show you how to cook it. It's not a, raw, a, a really good cheese when it's raw, but when it's seared like this in olive oil, it's delicious. It goes in sandwiches, we'll serve it in a megas wrap. It's great for breakfast, it's got a really good salty taste to it. Beautiful, now that's part of our platter that we're making, as well as falafel, which you're just getting on there right now, and we have a special worker. Um, this is Max. Max, how long have uh, you been uh, working here at Shambar? This is, of course, uh, Nico's son. How long have you been working here? A year, awesome. And your jobs are what here? What do you do here at Shambar? French fries. French, French fries. You cut the French fries, and this morning he's making our falafel, which people can make at home. And the basic ingredients for falafel are what? Soaked chickpeas or raw chickpeas. And it's very simple. You just put all the ingredients in, the, in a blender and just blitz it out until it gets nice and uh, pasty, like uh, what Max is rolling right now. And edamame, which is something edamame, that you put in parsley, here. Parsley, mint. We have some. Uh, Preserved lemon, red onions, garlic as well. And so you would blend all these ingredients together. We've got pepper as well and all our spices here. And what Max is doing, what are you doing? You just have to roll that up, Max? Yeah. Yeah. And you have a certain technique, like you, you, you make sure it gets to be a proper size, right? Awesome. And then what do we do? We have to cook it, right, Nico? We're cooking olive oil. Uh, lots of people like to deep fry them, but it's great. It's a lot of nicer when you just uh, cook in olive oil. See, it gets the color right away, and it gets real tender. You can pre-cook them if you have a party and warm them up. 
the, and then it gets served with different things. Like we, what we're gonna have different that. things, just like this. This is our mezza platter here, available at Shambar. Michelle, of course, lots of goodness here. Make your way here for lunch, maybe even today. Listen, I'm thinking if Trevor likes dessert, he should make his way here. I'm busy getting our lemon curd ready to go here at Shambar. We're gonna show you how to make that, but as we go to break, of course, they're getting ready to open in mere minutes, so they're getting their bread program ready. Cassidy is busy there. Oh, hard at work. It's a busy time here in the kitchen. We'll see you in just a second. You know, we heard earlier how versatile bacon is here at Shambar, and lemon curd is another thing that's versatile. Jane, what do I have going here right now? Right now, you've started with egg yolks and uh, sugar, okay. which is the base of all curds, right? And then you're going to add the cream, the lemon juice, and lemon zest. Oh, so that's something very simple for people to make. It's not an overly complicated thing, but what kinds of things uh, can we do with lemon curd, Jane? So we make a, a dessert here at Shambar with the base of lemon curd. But something you could make at home is, for example, a lemon tart. And that can be as easy as buying a pre-made tart shell and just filling it with this curd itself. And what is Nico doing right now? And we've also made a parfait, which is a really simple, just layered dessert. And we have the lemon curd, just whipped cream that we've done quickly, fresh berries, and then a meringue that Nico's torched on top. And what do you have here that you have at Shambar too? And this is a dessert that we serve at Shambar. It's called the Jardin de Bay, Berry Garden. And it has the lemon curd on the bottom, a chocolate milk crumb, fresh berries, and then we make a Sorel frozen yogurt as well edible flowers and some fresh sorrel. Absolutely lovely. Now I've got my lemon curd pretty much ready to go. Um, we'll maybe finish plating that or we'll get Nico to finish plating that while we show people what we have to do next. So we've got that all mixed up. And because you don't want the, the rind of the lemon right in your curd, you're gonna strain it. Okay. And then from that point, like whether you're making the parfait or whether you're making um, the dessert that Nico's finishing or the tart, do we have to do anything with this as far as cooking it besides, of course, the tart? No, and this also can be made the day before, okay. which is a really handy task if, you, if you're having a dinner party or something the day after. And that can stay like that, and then you'll just pour it right into your tart or bake it in a casserole dish. How's, how's Nico doing? Is he doing okay there? A little suffice? <laughs> okay, it's doing all right. Tell you what, Beautiful. you want to come here to Shambar. They're open for breakfast in a matter of minutes, and uh, the food is fantastic. New location, just two doors down. Cassidy, I know you're busy making your ciabatta. We're going to take a little break here on BT. We'll be right back. we got your news next. Pure happiness. We're definitely doing some unique cocktails this morning. We're using some items we smoked this morning, and also duck fat. And check this out. Pay attention in science class, kids. It's all going to help us in our cocktails up next on BT. Yeah, and just a couple of doors down from the old Shambar, but one thing that stays consistent is the food and the excellent cocktail program. Uh, Wendy, we're actually even using some ingredients that we smoked this morning. We certainly are. Part of what we do at Shambar is really kind of doing as much as possible from scratch. So as you saw earlier today with the smoker and Nico, um, I've prepared a bit of a Caesar. So we do have the smoked pork belly and as well the smoked tomato. So a lot of flavor coming through on that breakfast Caesar. Let's talk about how science has sort of come into play here. Absolutely. So um, with the new restaurant, I've got a couple of brand new toys. This is uh, my new distillation kit. So right now what we're doing, we're doing uh, cherry cedar bitters, which uh, we'll be mixing up in, in the cocktail. Beautiful. And you got lots of other flavors, so people can use those with their non-alcoholic drinks and of course the sodas as well. But I never thought we'd be using duck fat for a cocktail. So right now it's a bit of uh, molten duck fat, so it's rendered down really hot. It's going to partake all the flavor into this Canadian rye. So what I'm going to ask you to do is wash the fat right through that whiskey okay. to really get the flavor going going through. And then once this has happened, of course, you're not pouring the fat into a cocktail. What do you do with it after that point? So what I'm going to do with that is freeze it off for about two, three hours. As soon as the fat separates, we're going to skim the fat out of that whiskey and then um, mix it into our so cocktail. So it's really about the flavor, not the fat there. More so the flavor. So as you can see here, this is the finished product. Okay. So here we have the duck fat whiskey. And this here is a new cocktail on the list. Nice for full, really flavorful. Basically in the mortal and pestle, what I've done is created a smoked plum sea salt. And then here we're using a bit of a Mara Montenegro to really get that orange kind of chocolatey flavor. A little bit of the cherry bitters that we're distilling right now. And just really stir this up, nice and cold. Beautiful. I'll let you continue to make that cocktail. For more details on Shambar, of course, you can check them out at their new location. They are open right now. They're open for breakfast, lunch, dinner. They're open until late. And, of course, they have a fabulous brunch where they smoke that pork oh, all weekend long for some deliciousness, whether you're eating it or drinking it. More details. Check them out. We're going to take a little break here on Breakfast Television. What will the weather hold? It's pretty nice out there right now. Russ, of course, has all those details. I'm going to try. i got to try this. Stuff. I think you should. Yeah. Yeah.